So what experiment are you going to do today? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to look at what factors may affect our heart rate. So what I've done with my class is use this planner, which helps children generate ideas that they'd like to investigate. And they came up with how long we exercise for, what we eat and the type of exercise that they do. So we get the children to think about all the variables they could change on an experiment and look at, and then what they're going to measure or observe, which will be their pulse. But you don't have to use this. There are resources available that would give you step-by-step -step instructions for how to carry out this investigation. I just prefer it if it comes from the children. Katie will split her class into groups. Some will exercise and measure their heart rate. Others will eat and measure their heart rate. And I've just got to ask, whose idea was it to go with chocolate? <laughs> that was the children's idea, yeah. <laughs> so. They were keen for me to uh, spend my money on chocolate and uh, bring them some chocolate treats in. And they're yeah. all very keen to try that experiment. <laughs> <laughs> what particular ideas would you like the children to take away? It sort of splits into two, really. Um, there's the scientific knowledge, which would be the fact that exercise does affect your heart rate. And I'd want them to look at why does exercise affect your heart rate. The other side is the scientific inquiry, and that side is the, the children's ability to plan and carry out an investigation, to plan a fair test. In terms of the measurement, what do you need to measure pulse rate? We can just test our pulse by obviously feeling in our neck or the wrist, and they look at counting that pulse for 15 or 30 seconds and doubling or multiplying by four as necessary. That's fine. And but well, we've got this oximeter, which you can get quite cheaply online, and the children can just, if I do it to you, insert their finger, and it will soon start to read their pulse. So I suppose you, you don't have to go outside to do this? Well, I think that it's the sort of experiment that could be done anywhere. Ideally, I would start off the lesson inside and we would go outside because it's just nice to get the children outside if, if you can. If the outside's not available, it could be done in a classroom. We just have to adapt the exercises that we were doing. So it might just be that the children are doing steps or jumping up and down rather than running around or star jumps. <laughs> are there any specific health and safety issues you have to think about? The one thing I would be mindful of is if the children are going to be running want them in appropriate footwear. I'd be thinking with the exercise one as well, those children who are asthmatic, we'd have to be, watch out for them, make sure that their inhalers are outside. But with regards to chocolate, um, I'd just have to be mindful of allergies. Um, but we have all those records anyway. As a school, we, we know which children, what children can and can't eat. What would happen if one of the students got worried? You know, I mean, I suppose if you, if you sort of, your heart rate was abnormally low or abnormally high or, or that they, they you know, they, they came to say to you, I don't think this is yeah. right, there's something wrong with me. You know, it is really, in some sense, uh, yeah. a medical measurement ish. <laughs> yeah, they would, and some children possibly. But I'd reassure that child and then I'd check that they were using the equipment correctly because that could be why the result has gone a bit funny. And when they came back into class, I'd pull the data together at the end of the lesson to show that, that, that some children do have much lower heart rates than others so that they're not feeling that, well, there's something wrong with me and then they're overly anxious. Mm -hmm.